YouTube. Uh, what's going on? Uh, I haven't made a lot of videos lately because I've been busy and um, I've like made a lot of changes to my playing and so I feel really insecure about like teaching concepts and stuff. So I've been kind of waiting until either I feel secure about a concept I want to teach or I get a bunch of new stuff and guess what? I've gotten a bunch of new stuff. So let's start at the top. Yes, my equipment has changed a little bit, but not really the the main stuff that I use all the time. This is kind of ancillary things that I don't use all the time. So don't worry, the end game, I made that video, um, that was my previous equipment update. None of that stuff has really changed, except for this one, um, my 36B, my Bach, um, 525 medium bore with a valve um, trombone. I sold it. Um, I actually really liked it. I know I say that about everything, but I did really like this instrument. Um, I had my teacher play it, and he liked it too. Um, my former teacher, I should say, we just kind of hung out. Um, and I brought it over, and he put some high Fs into it, and he's like, yeah, this is good. Um, either with a smaller mouthpiece, like six, six, uh, six and a half, kind of made it um, seem a lot smaller and kind of got a little bit of brightness in the sound, or with my small shank 3G, um, it kind of kind of opened up, it came almost to 42 sound wise. It was really kind of cool how it could chameleon like that. But I had a day, a couple weeks ago, I was playing all my tenors. Um, you know, I have my Bach A47, I have my King 3B, Silver Sonic, and both of those horns were really, really good. I was playing through Arbins and Etudes and stuff, just kind of playing them one after another. And I realized the 36 just kind of had like a dead zone. Um, around the fifth partial, the D above the staff, that it just didn't want to leap out of the horn like it does on my other instruments. And it just kept happening. It wasn't it wasn't just me, it wasn't just the day. Um, I kind of noticed, and a friend had pointed this out too when he played it. Um, and so I was like, you know what? If I'm gonna have a, like all my, I have so many instruments, right? And I can't really afford to keep instruments that I'm not gonna use a lot and are not, amazing. Um, like right now I have a Contra. It's not the best Contra on the planet. It's pretty good I think. Um, but I can afford to keep it because it is a Contra and I'm, there's no other way I can get one for cheaper. Um, my 3B is amazing. My A47 is amazing. My bass is really amazing. Um, both bells are amazing so I can keep both of those. One of them is for travel. Um, and I was just like this 36 is not going to get used nearly as much as any of these other horns. Um, even though I did use it a couple times with other people, and I kind of liked it. It was it was pretty good, um, but unless it's like just mind-blowingly special, I just I can't really afford to keep it. So I sold it, and it's gone now. And I'm I kind of sad about it because it was really cool, and I I've wanted a 36 for so long, but I feel like if I'm going to have a 36, it's got to be just like perfect, or I'm it's not really worth having take up space and take up money that I could be using for other things. I also sold my Edwards dual bore slide that I've had forever. That was kind of like my biggest upgrade I had for a long time. <clears throat> Made my my last bass just like into a completely new instrument. Um, and I like won an audition on that and did a bunch of good stuff, did well in competitions and it was a good slide. I'm going to miss it, but I have two other slides that are kind of just better for the stuff that horns that I have now, so not super sad about that, but uh, it's gone now. So on to things that I bought. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but at the Women's Brass Conference I got this new Slimo Mix sheath. Um, it's basically just a long fabric thing that goes over a cleaning rod. I also got a cleaning rod with it, but it's just a cleaning rod. There's nothing special about that. Um, goes over this cleaning rod and kind of takes the place of the cheesecloth that I usually use. Um, and I got a small bore one, that's this one, at the conference, which works on all instruments. It's just, you know, you can actually use it on small horns. And then I got a large bore one that I just got at Horn Guys um, that only works on, I think, like large tenors and above. And wow, they're awesome. I don't know if you guys can see, but like, you can see how gross this is. Um, I cleaned, and I'm really proud of this, I finally cleaned my Contra slide all the way to the end because this is actually long enough on the other cleaning rod, I think, to get to the end of the Contra slide um, all the way to the crook. So that part of the slide had never been cleaned before, I'm pretty certain. 
and this got there. I'm super happy about these things. They're just like easy to use. You just put on the cleaning rod and you do the usual thing and that's it. And then you can put them in the, the clothes washer and it's done. You just wash it and use it again. So super happy about these. Like they're kind of expensive, I think, um, but they are reusable forever. So honestly, um, if I don't lose these, I think they'll pay themselves off in terms of cheesecloth that I used to have to buy um, probably in like a year. So happy about these. If you want something that cleans your horns, um, your outer slides, this is a good way to go. Um, I have bought a bunch of mouthpieces because I just I can't stop when they're kind of cheap. I have a full collection of Bach no letter mouthpieces. I have a Bach New York 7. I already had that one. I have a Bach Mount Vernon 7. I just got this one. I have a Bach New York 6. Uh, this is more recent. I don't know if I told you about this one. I have a large letters, so like a 90s mouthpiece 5. I have a modern 5. And I have two Corporation 3s. And I'm like, I think I got most of these pretty recently. Um, I just wanted to try them out. Uh, my former teacher, and a couple of people that I really respect use a Bach 7 for lead trombone. And so I've had a New York 7 for a while. The design of this mouthpiece is pretty weird. It's pretty out there. Um, it's really heavy compared to other Bachs. The rim is a little smaller than a normal 7. It's a little deeper. It sounds very legit. Um, not a super great lead mouthpiece, so I haven't really been using that. But I bought this uh, Mount Vernon 7 that is totally different. And I'm excited to use it, but it's missing a lot of plating, and the shank is too small. So, uh, not sure what that's about, but it doesn't actually fit my 3B. It taps out on the lead pipe. Not sure what that's about. Um, those are kind of cool. Um, I don't actually use them in it right now, so uh, if I get a small bore Bach trombone, maybe I'll use one of those, I'm not sure. Um, I also got a 5GS, a lot of you probably like I've heard of the 5GS at least. Um, it's kind of, I'm, I'm kind of fuzzy on what exactly the design is here, but it's like a 5G rim um, with kind of like a 6.5 AL cup. And right now I use a 6.5 AL on the 3B, so I was like, what's this gonna be like? Uh, my former teacher uses one of these for salsa um, to play really loud, really high for long amounts of time. And it's a pretty awesome mouthpiece on the 36, actually, it was like a perfect match. It could sound legit, it could sound not legit, you could play every range. Um, really good match for a 36B. Now that I don't have one, um, I can use it on my King 3B, but uh, I like the 6.5 a, a little more sound-wise. And I played just enough high stuff that I kind of like to, to keep the 6.5 the room. So just a cool mouthpiece. I also got a Hammond. Small shank, 10 ml. It's actually 10 m. Let's see if you guys can see that. It's marked 10 m, but it's been um, remachined to be 10 ml depth, so just a little bit larger. Um, this was also kind of good on the 36. Kind of weird. Um, not decided on it. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this or not. Now I have all these large small shank mouthpieces. Like I have this small shank 3G and stuff that I can't really use because they're not going to be very good on my 3B and I don't have any other small shank horns. So we'll see what happens to those. I'm not super mad about it, um, but I am sad that I don't have the 36. I also got a Greg Black, and this one's really important to me, a Greg Black 4G, 5G in medium weight. And I don't have it here because it's in the case. Um, I've been looking for a stupid mouthpiece for my stupid large bore tenor for so long now that will just kind of do everything. I have been using, that's not it, this is it. This so 10 MXL, which is the like deeper than ML depth, not as deep as L depth, with a three size rim. And I like it, but it's not perfect. The high range and the low range are not very good. It's kind of hard to hit, hard, uh, hard to play high, and it doesn't center very well down low. Um, otherwise, it's kind of easy. I like it, but it just like the extremes aren't good. And um, I'm practicing the large bore tenor trombone for a principal trombone audition that's coming up, and for that it's just not a good mouthpiece. So I have been using my very small Bach 3G that I have, um, which is good, but is just not quite the modern sound that I want. Um, I have a Greg Black 3G 5G on order with just a little bit larger rim, 
but who knows when I'm gonna get that. So I finally got this 4G, 5G, and it's pretty awesome, at least at first glance. I've been playing it for a couple days, and it makes a really good sound. It's pretty easy to play. I can play high, I can play low. I'm excited about it. We'll see what happens. I'll have like a report on that, I guess. And then finally, the big news, and the horn you saw at the beginning, and kind of the reason I sold my 36, is my new bass trombone. Yes, I actually bought another bass trombone. It's been a while since I just straight up bought a horn like this. This is a Bach 50B3OG, meaning um, it's got independent rotors, open wrap, with a gold bell. Um, and a couple other mods that have been done to this instrument. Um, from what I can tell, this is like a early 90s, like 1990, 91, something like that, um, instrument. Not an especially good era for box. Uh, they were starting to make a ton of horns because the Japanese market was just, just gobbling up um, instruments. But this one is actually weirdly good. Um, I got it because it was pretty cheap and I want a Bach to use at work. Um, the 112H works, but it just makes me so aggravated because I get no feedback when I have earplugs in. I have no idea what I'm doing. And it plays just differently enough that it kind of messes up my playing um, otherwise. Um, and I'm going to make a separate video right now about this just so this isn't one like 15 minute long video. See you guys in a second. Um, check this one out right next to this video.